nearly decades, Greece has been locked in a dispute with its neighbor over the name Macedonia. Last year, a breakthrough came. Greece agreed to recognize its neighbor, and the neighbor agreed to change its name to North Macedonia. But the deal, known as the Prespa Agreement, has been fiercely resisted on both sides of the border. Είναι ψέματα ότι υπάρχει μακεδονικό έθνος και είναι ψέματα ότι αυτοί οι άνθρωποι εκεί είναι μακεδόνες. Μακεδονία, μακεδόνσκο το, ε, βονάσιο τκοτ, νιε το αγωνόσιμε ότα γενεράτσι. For me, as a Greek, this dispute is an important part of modern Greek identity. It feels like I never really knew the degree to which this country was divided. And for me, as an Australian with Macedonian roots, the dispute is central to unlocking my complicated family history. I feel really sad that, that the family separated. A year on from the Prespa Agreement, we're travelling from Greece... What are you doing about the Prespa Agreement? ...to North Macedonia to see for ourselves how well this deal is working. Can the Prespa Agreement finally solve the fierce rivalries that have existed in this region for so long? Or will the issue of a name continue to plague both countries' futures? Athens in the heat of the summer is neither the time nor the place for any hasty decisions. But in the birthplace of democracy, political intrigue is never far away. Today is election day, and among the big issues is the Prespa Agreement. Earlier this year, there were violent demonstrations here against the name deal. Surrendering the name of the ancient Greek province of Macedonia was too much to bear. Prime Minister Tsipras's goodwill trip to Greece's northern neighbour in April was the final straw for many Greeks. To understand why, you need to know that you can't escape the weight of history here. Growing up in Athens, I was constantly surrounded by Greece's glorious past, especially as my dad is an amateur archaeologist. And this is the latest reminder. This statue goes to the heart of the long-running naming dispute, the legacy of perhaps the most famous soldier in history. Alexander the Great came from an unfashionable province in ancient Greece called Macedonia. But the name Macedonia, the statue seems to be saying, will always belong to Greece. It was only in 1913 that a border was created, separating the Greek province of Macedonia and the territory to the north. In 1991, as Yugoslavia tore itself apart, this northern territory decided to call itself the Republic of Macedonia. Greece never recognized that name. Almost 30 years later, time is up for Prime Minister Tsipras and his Syriza party. A new leader is arriving for his coronation. Kyriakos Mitsotakis had made no secret of his opposition to the Prespa Agreement. But now he'll be in charge of implementing it. Just outside Athens lies the port of Piraeus. It's been central to Greece's prosperity for centuries. And it was here my grandparents boarded a ship for a new life in Australia. Their Slavic names had been changed to Greek ones, and although they left as Greek citizens, they took with them a very separate Macedonian culture. I want to get to the bottom of their story and fill in the gaps of my own identity. To really understand this issue, we've had to leave Athens and head north. Courtney and I grew up with different sides of this story. Thessaloniki, Greece's second city, 
is the capital of the Greek province of Macedonia. For many proud Greeks here, the use of the name Macedonia for anything not within the Greek state was a travesty that many still resist today. Michalis Patsikas, an olive farmer, is one such Greek. Για μας η Μακεδονία είναι η ψυχή μας, είναι είναι η ζωή μας, είναι τα τα μέρη μας. Δεν μπορείς να δίνεις ένα όνομα. Όταν δίνεις ένα όνομα δίνεις έδαφος. Δεν μπορείς να παραχωρείς και να παραχαράσεις την ιστορία. Είναι ιστορικό έγκλημα, είναι πολιτιστικό έγκλημα, είναι εθνικό έγκλημα. Michalis felt so strongly about the name that last year he began to organize resistance to the proposed change. Τα συλλαλητήρια μπορεί να μην φαίνεται ότι κατάφεραν να σταματήσουν ή να ακυρώσουν την συμφωνία, όμως προκάλεσαν κάτι πάρα πολύ δυνατό στον ελληνικό λαό. Τον έκανε να σταθεί ξανά στα πόδια του μέσα από τα 10 χρόνια αυτά των μνημονίων που είχε καταρακωθεί. For Michalis, the Prespa Agreement presents a fundamental problem. Δεν υπάρχουν Μακεδόνες ως εθνότητα, δεν υπήρχαν ούτε εδώ ως εθνότητα, δεν υπάρχει μακεδονική γλώσσα, έχει αποδειχτεί και ακόμα παραπάνω δεν μπορεί να υπάρχει ε, μία χώρα διεθνώς που να έχει το όνομα της Μακεδονίας από τη στιγμή που υπάρχει μία επαρχία, αυτή που είμαστε τώρα εδώ πέρα, που ονομάζεται Μακεδονία. Ε, ακόμα και βόρεια ή άνω ή όπως και αν τη λένε, ουσιαστικά θα είναι ε, κάτι το οποίο μονίμως θα έχει αλλητρωτικές βλέψεις προς αυτή την επαρχία που λέγεται Μακεδονία. It's not just history or land that Greeks feel is under threat. Many businesses are worried about competition from North Macedonia. Simeon Diamantidis manufactures nets. He's concerned that consumers will be confused by products from North Macedonia that are simply labelled Macedonian. The problem is that their products have half price because uh, salaries in Greece are much more than uh, North Macedonia. It needs three words that the products from North Macedonia must have the name products from North Macedonia. They don't put this in the agreement, so we have this problem today. Simeon's solution is to develop a Greek brand for Macedonia that only Greek Macedonian products will carry. The great is Great Alexander and land is land of Macedonia. So divine great land, it means Greece. The day we were in town, the Prime Minister was visiting the Ministry for Macedonia and Thrace. Despite his fiery words on Prespa in opposition, Kyriakos Mitsotakis has done little in power to reverse the agreement. The reason for this may be in his blood. His father was also Prime Minister, and despite opposition, he allowed the neighbouring country to be called the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. Prime Minister, Catherine Corelli, BBC. What are you doing about the Prespa agreement? We can talk later if you want. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Although I tried to press him on the agreement, he was unwilling to talk. But later that night, once again, he made his feelings clear. Εξακολουθώ να πιστεύω ότι η συμφωνία των Πρεσπών ήταν μια αρνητική συμφωνία για τη χώρα μας. Την καταψήφισα, προειδοποιώντας τίμια όμως τους Έλληνες, τι συνεπαγόταν η υπογραφή της. Although the Prespa agreement was not signed by him, and he may dislike the concession of the name, he will be bound by it. In any case, it suits the geopolitics. Greece is surrounded by potential threats. To the north of the country lies the historically turbulent Balkans, which have never been known for peace and stability. Bringing North Macedonia inside the EU tent was supposed to address this, but recently the country's European aspirations were derailed. Pour dire d'abord, tous les progrès demandés ne sont pas là, et nous avons encore des des problèmes. In their attempt to project an image of a great classical European capital, the centre of Skopje has been completely rebuilt in recent years, but the renovation infuriated Greece who felt its Macedonian history was being stolen. The centrepiece was this statue, bearing an uncanny resemblance to Alexander the Great, although officially it's known as warrior on a horse. 
Amidst all this nationalism, a new prime minister was elected. After two decades of Greece blocking his country's EU membership, Zoran Zaev put his political career on the line with the Prespa deal. But the rebuff from Brussels means he too may lose his job. Do you feel that you've paid the price for solving a problem that everyone wanted to see solved? It's a kind of punishment. We take responsibility and we change our constitution through the debate of 120 days with a two-third majority because of changing our constitutional name. Very painful process. The country was bitterly divided over the name change. When a referendum on the issue was held last year, two-thirds of the country boycotted the vote. In order to change the constitution, nine opposition MPs had to side with Zaev. The bitter feeling is when you saw how the MPs was attacked. All MPs who vote uh, for PRESPA agreement and changing of constitution. Nine of them who change even political side to support the future of our country. And really they are until today under threats. When uh, President Macron announced this decision, leader of the opposition start immediately with threats. And threats here carry consequences. Two years ago, a mob stormed the parliament building, protesting the election of a new speaker. Zaev himself was badly injured that day. The leading opposition party, the VMRO, is a conservative, highly nationalist movement, responsible for Skopje's recent facelift. Nikola Machevsky is one of their leading MPs and was strongly opposed to the Prespa agreement. Deka, vrz osnova na toj dogovor, na građanite na Republika Makedonija im beše vetuano deka ke bidat členki vo Evropskata unija, odnosno ke dobijat datum za početok na pregovor. Nije to ovo moment od go nemam. Zašto? Migu to, toj dogovor je veke minato, lagite na gospodinu zajev vo Republika Makedonija se minato, you say that North Macedonia has reaped all the disadvantages of this deal, but within Greece there's also a lot of resentment towards it. Greekskata strana ima dogovor, makedonskata strana go nema delo od koji što trebaše da se ispolni. Za da go dobijem, proče mi samo to prašenje referendumsko veše, da li ste za dogovor od Sogrcija, za vlegovanje vo Evropskata unija i NATO. Having North Macedonia within the EU and NATO was designed to shore up a troubled area of the Balkans, Zaev is clearly worried about the consequences if the EU doesn't open its doors. Balkan, that was not a hundred years ago, there was wars. In our country, 2001 was conflict between Macedonians and Albanians. What's happened in Kosovo? What's happened in Croatia, in Bosnia, everywhere in the Balkan? We remember this period of time. There is a lot of feelings. There is a children of victims from these wars who live here with a lot of sensitivity. We need to take care about that, but others also need to take care, like European Union leaders. For many younger citizens, like Blasien, being inside the EU is much more important than the country's name. This dispute's been going on mm. for 30 years, pretty much your whole life. What was the impact of this? I think people, especially young people, were kind of uh, getting, getting bored with this topic, constantly being asked what the name issue is, how will you resolve it, what are the possibilities. I think we, we all feel quite European. We want to live with open borders and, and have movement of, of young people and learn from each other what the other culture is. The young in North Macedonia have already shown an appetite for dissent, pelting buildings with colour bombs to protest against corruption. But Blasian fears that with the EU decision, the young will vote with their feet. We live in the 21st century, everything is one click away, and I think young people feel that they deserve better and they can do better um, in, in other countries, so that's why, that's why they leave. North Macedonia is caught in limbo. Having changed its name, the country will be hoping to have more to show for it when EU leaders meet next year.
Back on the Greek side of the border, there's a group of villages where the definition of Macedonian is even more complicated. Many of the older generation here grew up speaking what is now known as Macedonian, a Slavic language that was later banned. Their language may be closer to Skopje than Athens, but they didn't feel an affinity for one or the other. To them, they were simply Macedonian. It's here that my family roots lie, and I've come to meet my grandmother's sister, who I call Ristana, who is my oldest surviving relative in this part of the world. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, dobro utro. I feel really emotional, actually, because it reminds me of my mum, and she lost her mum, and this is her sister. So. I feel really sad that, that, that um, I never got to meet my mum's mum. Ristana grew up speaking the Slavic language, but after marrying a Greek man, she rarely spoke it. And there could be other reasons. When she was at school, Slavic-speaking children in the village were beaten if they strayed into their mother tongue. Life here has been hard. The village was occupied by the Nazis and the ensuing Greek civil war pitted families against one another. But what was it like in the village growing up? Eventually, my grandparents left this land in search of opportunities abroad. They settled in Western Australia, but maintained a strong sense of their Macedonian identity. My mum grew up speaking the Macedonian language, and when I came along, the language and the culture was passed on to another generation. <laughs> Stand up tall. <laughs> For those who stayed in the village, like Kristana, identity has shifted over time, and she now firmly considers herself Greek. Back in Thessaloniki, it's Ochi Day, Greece's national day. In the Greek Macedonian capital, there's also a protest about the Prespo Agreement. The protesters' message is short and familiar. Okay. Macedonian is Greece only. Here it says that silence uh, is complicity in the North Macedonian plan. Yeah, they say the agreement is an embarrassment. In the midst of the protest is Michalis the olive farmer, who we met at the start of the journey. He tells us the protest will try to march towards the official Ochide parade. As expected, the police are not prepared to let Greece's National Day be hijacked by Michalis and his Macedonian protest. Δεν 
A compromise is reached. The protesters are allowed to take a position by the side of the main parade. A year on, here in Thessaloniki, the wounds from the name deal still feel particularly fresh. Well, it feels like I never really knew the degree to which this country was divided until right this minute. You see this intense nationalism up here, and while in Athens there are people who feel this way, sure, this kind of big display isn't really as widespread. Ohi Day, literally no day, marks Greece's refusal to bow to Mussolini in 1940. Across the country, there are parades, a chance to revel in national pride and to embrace your Greek identity. Although Ohi Day is a commemoration of the past, it's also a celebration of the present. And there's clearly more appetite for this than for the anti-Prespa protest. In Greece and North Macedonia, the Prespa agreement tried to solve a thorny issue that goes to the heart of identity, a name. History is always central to national identity. But when a country's future is uncertain, it's easy to understand why people turn to the past. For my family, there was always a sense their Macedonian identity wasn't acknowledged, making them hold on to it more tightly. The same is true of almost everyone we met. They worry that by conceding to others, they'll lose part of themselves. At this time of global uncertainty, the question of national identity seems more urgent than ever. In the case of the name Macedonia, compromise will always come at a cost. <laughs>